Okay, hello everyone. Welcome back to another edition of the VHL Scuttle Cow Holistic Healing Hour. Host, Grandpa Bell, moderator. Going to cut right to it tonight. This is actually a taping Saturday evening or early the 17th of February. Saturday night, going to have some fun. I've read this book before, Sense of Humor, interjecting, and it covers many of the topics that we talk about at the shows, community, how to rejuvenate humor, how it's good for health, all the topics that I talk about at my show is always food for the mind, the body, and the soul. Over the years, I've read many passages from Portland Undercover, how to visit New England's hippest city without looking like a tourist. It's a very humorous look. Some 24 years ago now, a publication on when Portland was really booming with its uh, tourism at that point in time, and it kind of wasn't the inception of the start of the onset of the big ships coming into our bay, in our harbor here in Casco Bay. So I'm going to segue right in and uh, read you some of the chapters. So I'm going to kind of start with refreshing wherever you come into this. Once again, it's called Portland Undercover, How to Visit New England's Hippest City, Without looking like a tourist, the author is and was Chris Barry. He actually worked for a local rag here in Portland, Maine, called the Casco Bay Weekly at that time. And his function for them was to go out and about in mostly the waterfront area of Portland, but the peninsula that the city is, and kind of interact with the tourists as they've come you know come in off of the boats and the different venues and our famous restaurants and famous world renowned symphony and museum and so forth so let's get to it i'm just going to start by probably refreshing everybody's memory including my own it indeed was copyrighted in 2000 and Let's see if it says a little bit more to help. Okay, let's read this. Thank you for bearing with me. Portland Undercover, How to Visit New England's Hippest City Without Looking Like a Tourist by Chris Berry. Signs you're a tourist in Portland. You wear a fanny pack. And it's so true at that time, especially with the tourists. And it was just when everything was a tad different, a little bit more relaxed. It was a humorous look at the tourists and it was a give and take back with humor nobody took offense at it because it wasn't offensive food for thought from where we are now so another little adage from the book you wear clothing adorned with cute lobsters in lighthouses insignias of maine you know pulling headlight lobsters Vacation land. You ask the waiter or waitress to help tie a lobster bib around your neck. That's very funny because, you know, like any place that anyone would go for the first time, if they didn't, in, you know, weren't familiar with their cuisine or how to eat it or how to prepare it, believe me when I tell you, <laughs> if you're a novice at lobster eating, or lobster preparation, mm, that's why you get the bib, and they listen, they're delicious and whatever, it's a very messy thing to eat. It just is, <laughs> depending on how you prepare it, and so forth. So the bib, and the napkin, and all of that, and then helping the tourist tie it around their neck, it was so true, so funny, and everybody went with the flow. All right, I won't bother reading the acknowledgments and so forth. The, the entire book has some 11 chapters. And, uh, hey, let's start right in the beginning. So the introduction, verbatim. Here's a few things you need to know about Portland, Maine. Portland has all the amenities of a major metropolis, metropolis, he tried to say, with the feel of a small town. Everything you need is located on an easily walkable three-and-a-half-mile peninsula on the shores of Casco Bay, providing unforgettable views of islands and ocean. 
So true. I've talked many times, those of us that are native here, regardless if we left and came back or where we've been, those that were born and bred here and raised here, we took that so much for granted. What we've been blessed with for scenery and majestic beauty within the state of Portland for sure. Continuing. Where'd I leave off without my new corrective lenses? <laughs> I'm joking around a little bit. Let's see here. The arts and music scene is eclectic and hip. The politics? This is 2020, everybody. <laughs> are fairly progressive and the weather is generally beautiful. Sure, we've got our problems. Notably a shortage of low-income housing and a rising homeless population. Yep. Back in 2020, so true. <clears throat> but nothing like Boston or New York, which they still pale in comparison, of course, with the craziness now. This was 20 years ago. Can't say that enough. Crime is low, it was, for sure. And just a handful of murders annually, so true, 20 years ago. And unlike most cities, we don't have a bad section. So true, 20 years ago. Rougher and hey, you know, be careful on a Friday night just for fisticuffs or any of that kind of crazy stuff. But not really. Not really. You could pretty much walk around and feel comfortable in doing so 20 years ago. So, some mayors don't like visitors. It's a joke. The whole book is a joke, but it's so true in a humorous way. So stay with this. It's very funny. <laughs> okay, some mainers don't like visitors. Can you blame them? While merchants depend heavily on tourism, many locals resent the longer lines at stores and restaurants in the summer. It wasn't a case of resentment. It's a funny slant on it. Let me continue with that. But don't let that stop you from visiting our fair city. As long as you have a copy of Portland Undercover hidden in a newspaper, <laughs> no one will ever know you are from anywhere away. Please appreciate the humor in that. Please appreciate 20 years ago when everybody went with the flow on that. They almost anticipated it coming here and they would, tourists from wherever they would come, and would tell wonderful stories when they got back home about how great their visit was and how much they liked the amenability of the establishments, the people, how receptive and you know great it was and beautiful and everybody so helpful. That's pretty much still true of most native Mainers. 20 years ago, Nobody thought twice about smile. That's funny. Taken both ways by the giver and the recipient. And believe me, they gave it back with no scorn, with no animosity. It was fun. And when you interchange like that, as you did mingle out, you know, or whatever, and you started to maybe you were in the same eatery, you were at the bar. There's a part about that that's very funny in the book in a non-threatening way. It's fun, and it's funny. I can remember distinctly several conversations, like the accent, we dropped it, you know, we dropped the I-N-G. Well, it's so true. I mean, that's not making fun of anybody. So that would just be their retort. They would give it back a little bit, like, I'm sorry, I couldn't understand you. Was that looking or looking? That's funny. That's funny. It's appreciating humor. It's appreciating the ambiance that makes those types of trips and tours fun. And believe me, the old port was the the old port. Those that don't know that has a booming history. The old port festivals. I don't, I've even lost track of the number, the head count, and I don't even remember now if they still have them because 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 uh, because of the wonderful things he does. That's the Wizard of Oz, of course. Right? Right. So, some manners don't like visitors. Can you blame them? 
While merchants depend heavily on tourism, many locals resent the longer lines at stores and restaurants in the summer. Parking gets hard, or parking, okay, we'll play along, accent, that's funny. Oh, we used to get picked up on that a lot, of, on, yeah, and I think we still do. Parking the car, that's a little bit more Boston-ish. We get guilty by association on that. We are neighbors, but... And somewhere along the way, when I did used to travel a little bit, I have no idea why people kept asking me, are you from New Jersey? <laughs> I'm not sure where that came from, but whatever. With no aspersions on New Jersey, I have no idea what that meant. I guess they have some kind of a New York, which I can't emulate, I used to. And by the way, their accents are pretty funny too. You see, nobody has to get offended by that or any of that kind of crazy stuff. So, in continuing in the book a little bit here. So, uh, let's see. Stay with the old man here. Where did I live off? Okay. Okay, you need this guide, this book, because our peninsula is blessed with a refreshing shortage of... Is blessed, he should say. Tough night at the races. Let me say that again. Blessed with a refreshing shortage of franchise restaurants back then so true yeah we had the mcdonald's way back in the 60s and all it, it was so true there wasn't a particular coffee shop on every corner there is now there really 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 per se wasn't many franchises 20 years ago they're all here now of course sandwich shops the whole bit franchises franchises 20 years ago, that's a true statement, predominantly in Portland. There wasn't that many 20 years ago. Many world-class famous restaurants still, and God love them all if they're allowed and able to survive. And we got hit with some extreme weather and all of the above. Presently, vacation land, you know. It's still called vacation land. So contingent on livelihood in the state. Peripherally, establishment-wise, state budget-wise, it's very key. So you need this guide 20 years ago when it was written. Here you're faced with an unusual dilemma in modern American times. How to survive in a city filled with owner-operated shops and eateries after reading Portland Undercover, you'll learn where to dine, drink, and explore without looking like a tourist. Unless, of course, you're too lazy to walk. That's funny. <laughs> then we'll spot your foreign license plates, <laughs> and your cover is blown. You understand, folks? Deep calming, but what's offensive about that? What's offensive about that? Absolutely nothing. Okay, one more and we'll end this out. I'm going to go through chapter one if you're still here a little bit. It's so funny. Why you should visit Portland. Here's a relaxing New England vacation. Spend an unhurried week in Portland. Eat every meal at a different great restaurant. Point well taken that I uh, you know, outlined earlier. Quick, quick Jeopardy note for anybody who won't. I'm not sure it's ever been a final Jeopardy question, my example of Based on populace, I don't know about now, 20 years ago, based on populace, there's not many people that live here still. We are over a million people now. I don't think we were then. So in any event, here, based on populace, 20 years ago, per capita, we had the most restaurants and lawyers, attorneys, so true, uh, in the United States. I'm not sure how great of a factoid that is, but it's so true. Lots of restaurants, lots of lawyers. Lots of famous restaurants, renowned chefs. Emerald Lagasse did not have one of his restaurants here. Please understand what I'm saying. <clears throat> he did have some coming uppances here at the Sheridan Inn, no less. Way back when he was starting out, previous to 20 years ago. Everybody has a starting point, but yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He did some training as an, an executive chef here in Portland, Maine. Not one of his own establishments. I just want to make that clear. 
But we have renowned world chefs for sure in Portland, Maine. And we say a prayer for everybody, including them, to be able to exist in the world as we see it now. So let's continue with this on the humor. We'll stay for another five, ten minutes, and that'll be it for today. Okay, so let me repeat that, and um, I'll interject my little anecdotes at my audio shows later. Just trying to give you some extra ambiance by somebody that's lived there their whole life. I left at different intervals and all of that, but this is about my hometown. This is about my heritage. I happen to be very proud. Maine has a rich history in many categories. Military, civil war, being the first of many things in the nation. Art museums, the World Symphony. A beautiful city. We're trying to keep it that way. Shops and magnificent views. Head to the beach for a day 20 years ago with a pulp novel. Get it? 20 years ago, pulp fiction and so forth. Hop aboard a harbor cruise with a picnic lunch. That's what they did and do, probably still, but definitely did. The islands alone in Casco Bay are just another gift from God. You can walk around the Arts District and check out the many galleries, which there are to whatever capacity still. They were booming 20 years ago. Then enjoy a delicious dinner. Most of Maine goes to bed by 10 p.m. Eh, that kind of is a little bit different now because of world, but not so far off the stretch. And there was a time other than being young or whatever then, but guess what? Closed at 1 o'clock because they buttoned up the establishments Many after-hour parties and all of that. I wouldn't know anything about that. I was told that somewhere along the way. Right? <laughs> so in any event, hop aboard a harbor cruise with a picnic lunch, walk around the arts district and check out the many galleries. Then enjoy a delicious dinner. Most of Maine goes to bed by 10 p.m., but in the big city, which Portland is, the largest geographical and population state, it's not the capital, but that's a true factoid. It is the biggest city. The state's pretty sizable geographically. It's a pretty good sized state. If you envision the rest of the five New England states, you could microcosm them in to the outline of Maine. It's roughly, if you started, if you could, some of them are unaccessible, but if you started like in Kittery, at the southern tip, and those of you that are familiar with what the outline of Maine looks like, if you were able to drive all those little inlets and islands and roads, in some cases you can't, but if you were, and then go up into Canada and go around and up and down in the way that Maine's shaped, it's 3,000 miles. If you laid that straight out, that's Maine to California. It's a pretty good sized state. It's not the biggest. I mean, Texas would dwarf us, but it's a pretty big geographical state, size wise. For instance, it's not Rhode Island, which definitely can fit inside many states, right? God bless Rhode Island or whatever. All right, let's finish this up here and we'll continue it along the way because I want to interject another one very quickly here, which is also humorous. So hop aboard a harbor cruise with a picnic lunch, walk around the arts district and check out the many galleries. The big city goes to bed at 10 o'clock. Let's see here. Go to the theater, the movies, and catch a hot local band or a national act with a Portland tour date. I've talked about that numbers of times. There's been so many people, groups, professionals in all genres of music, by the way, rock being pretty heavily represented, that do indeed start their national tours here. And the one most famous one that sticks in my mind, and I also was there, it just right off the top, uh, rolling out of 295 out of Portland, Maine, Jackson Brown, just for one. He wrote a song about it. Uh, and then, of course, our symphony orchestra and the many venues that are renowned. And lots of bar bands that are you know about now. I talked about Aerosmith. 
Well, Stephen Tyler had roots here. It's why his daughter lived here. His ex-wife or whatever, mother of his child, Liv Tyler, went to school right here. Wayne Fleet grew up in the West End. And before they were Aerosmith, and, you know, Aerosmith, the Boston rock band that they've always been, they played in Portland many times, and, of course, professionally. That's just one. Todd Rundgren, who... You know, I don't. This isn't about the life story of uh, the Tylers, but Todd Rundgren <clears throat> was kind of involved in that family tree and so on and so forth. Lots of history in Portland and in Maine. So let's finish this statement for the book, and I want to tell you about another one real quickly. So when you see the moon casting silver light over the islands in Casco Bay. You'll be happy you came to Portland, whatever the year is, for sure. It's just a gift from God. That moonlight bay in those islands, sunset on, and sunrise on the opposite premise, just things we took for granted. Part of getting old, I think, reflecting like that. One more. I've talked about this book a number of times, and actually I just had a lady comment on this at my message board. Thank you. And she found it so humorous because it is. It's when we all could get over ourselves. And maybe we should do it again. It's entitled, 101 Reasons Why a Cat is Better Than a Man. Okay, ladies? This is about, this is about a woman, whatever, years ago, and I'll get to the date. Whatever, in her marriage, in her relationships, her best friend, her buddy, her lover, her whatever, a woman scorned. And it's very funny. It's very not sexually, graphically depicted, I'll show you them, but graphically depicted in the way that the cat is totally supported her or, you know, the woman that authored the book in all the scenarios. It's a knock on us guys, but it's funny. And stay with me, I'm not done yet. I have an idea for my own book, All Sphere and Love and War, right? <laughs> okay, 101 Reasons Why a Cat is Better Than a Man. The author is still and was. Hopefully they're all still with us. I mean, this was, I think, 1997, 98. Let me see if I can tell you that real quick. Stay with me. Uh, da, 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 da. 1994. Wow, 1994. 30 years ago. Okay, so, 101 reasons why a cat is better than a man. You know me and pronunciations of names. It is definitely spelt A L L I A. I believe it's Alaya. And the last name I would go with Zobel, but it's spelled Z O B E L. And the illustrations by Nicole Hollander. Spelled phonetically that way, it has to be Nicole Holland, or all apologies if it's not. Okay, so quickly, opening the foreword of the book, again from 1994. Verbatim, for my parents, Alvin and Lucille, my feline-like mate, Desmond Finbar Nolan, and the cats who helped me write this book, Oscar, Pookie, Twinkle, Toes, Nose, Scruffy, Vanessa, and Winston Stanley III, the Thoid, AZ, obviously a cat lover, and I don't know if she had all these cats simultaneously, but the secret is out on me, I think, and my family. I've had two sets of brother cats for the last 34 years, you know, congruently. First set of waiting for us at the Rainbow Bridge, Max and Harry. Presently, you've seen my two... <laughs> Brady and Brody, for sure, if you watch this show at all or, you know, are familiar with it. And they're now 16 and a half. So, all animals, but a special affinity to cats and the humor of the book. It's a brilliant idea. And was when it was written. So she's making her dedications to her feline companions, Buddy and Izzy, for their invaluable help in drawing the illusions and, I'm sorry, illustrations for this book. And she humbly apologizes if she was less than respectful to them about anything at any time. It's just humor, folks. It's just humor. With special thanks to my editor, Brandon Toropov, and the rest of Bob Adams' gang, 
you know, the folks involved in the book. Okay. Again, not sexually graphic. Please, 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 please. But here's my point. You see the cat? It's just awesome. The depiction of the boots, I'm, I'm, I still to this day, after all these videos, want to point the opposite way because it's mirror vision to me. You see all the boots and shoes in the closet and the cat right there? Here's the caption to that. This is about a woman scorn, whatever the particulars were, boyfriend, husband, you know, lover, whatever, dating, first date, they were together 50 years or a series of. A woman scorned, okay? So the cat thinks you should have lots of shoes. A beautiful woman needs lots of shoes. That's the cat thinking that and supporting her outlook and opinion and, oh, the man's horrible. In other words, the man's probably... You got too many shoes or well, oh, whatever. I don't know. What did the guy say? Ready? Cats love you when you fuss over them. Cats are not afraid of commitment. Cats don't believe in divorce. <laughs> Guys, hey, you got you to gotta take it, right? That's a fair shot. Stay with me. I got a little something for us, too. I'm joking around. Okay, so as you turn the page and go through the book, it's very funny. I'll make this a little bit brief. How are we doing on the studio clock overall? Okay, we're approaching 30 minutes, so let me wrap this up. So a cat doesn't care how you look in the morning, and you can see, uh, you know, hey, hey, you know, she doesn't have her makeup on, her hair's frazzled, she just got out of the shower, whatever, she has her bathrobe on and stuff. Come on, guys, everybody. But see how graphically the cat's right there giving her comfort and hugging? Well, you know this caption before I read it, right? A cat doesn't care how you look in the morning. <laughs> a cat would never flirt with your friends. Uh-oh. Whatever time and frame, and again, whatever the degree of intimacy or husband, at this particular time, I, I think the guy might have been maybe in the proverbial hot water. Wow, listen to this. A cat would never flirt with your friends. And guys, mm, you know... A cat would never tell you how to dress or grouse, that you wear too much makeup. It's very funny. And it goes on and on and on. And, of course, it's funny. It's real. It's human. It's about the human cause, the relationships. It's funny. And I'll read more of this than I have over the years. And, okay, guys, now it's our turn. All's fair, right? Let's just say maybe I'll come out with a book and say 101 Reasons Why... Uh, a dog is better than a woman. <laughs> you understand that it's humor all the way around? Okay, smile. Even if you don't have teeth, <laughs> be happy. Great song. I'll see you guys at the shows. At the time of this taping, a little Saturday night unwindness. I like to do this at the end of the week with my recaps. Boy, do we need some humor now more so than ever, in my humble opinion. Peace, everybody.